<laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. Hello. Okay. Hi. 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 Thank you all for joining. How are you all? Uh, really good today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Good. How was the weather up there? Uh, getting, uh, it's getting warmer, but uh, I guess it's not as hot as LA. Oh yeah, LA. Well, we don't. We're kind of far. We're sixty-four miles from LA, so uh, and I control okay. the weather here in Moreno Valley, so I don't worry about LA. That's their problem. <laughs> It's already flip-flop season in Prince George. Oh yeah? So relatively warm? Uh, I don't know about that. It's still <laughs> cold for me, but according to everyone, it's like, it just feels like summer, wait till it gets hotter. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> wow, and it's, it's interesting you said that because that's actually gonna be part of what we discuss on terms of how the thoughts and the words create and manifest. So when we start seeing things on the global level and people are looking at the, the COVID-19, these are global thoughts and global consciousness that, that actually form into reality. Yes. So people globally don't know they're using the five. <laughs> came together uniformly and united and we all had the one thought that we were going to send everybody love we changed so many lives in that moment because of how we were thinking, vice how the world was thinking. Does that make sense? Well, but that's some good stuff. <laughs> All right. So, any testimonies in the body ways? Nothing. Yesterday, uh, yesterday we we went out for a drive. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, I noticed um, something with in the sky. Uh, first, I saw uh, it's supposed to be a cloud, right? But a cloud that looks like a feather, a very big feather. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh yeah, that's nice. And then so, then the next moment when I looked up again, it changed uh, different shapes. Right now, it becomes like two big wings. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And then later on, it, it kind of come together and then it looks like it's a wrapping around something. They were playing with you, huh? I know, right? Is it? Is yeah. it? Well, we have innumerable amount of assistance on what you would call the other side of the veil or the invisible world, the spirit world, however you want to define it. And they always get our attention to bring us the highest joy. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you not enjoy the creativity, of the shapes? Mm -hmm. Wasn't a long amount of time, was it? No, it's like, so it made me very curious. Like I want to look at the clouds all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I keep looking up. And every time it comes up with different shapes. And then, you know, it feels like uh, it's a painting that continuously changing. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was telling myself, I said, oh, yeah, are you trying to tell me something? Yes. You know what they're telling you? Remember we talked about yesterday that everything is constantly changing, everything's always moving, that you call energy in motion or emotion? Uh -huh. okay. Well, those are the alchemists part of, of, of that. I'll let, it, I'll let it sink in for a minute. Yeah, so... So is it my creation or is it? Yes. Watch this. <laughs> it is your creation, but it also showing you God creating, ever changing, ever moving, always showing you the beauty of everything within everything. From one form to another form, you saw beauty, more beauty, more beauty, more beauty. 
made you more curious, more curious, and more curious. Hey, I want to look up more. <coughs> yeah. Good when you look up more. Whole lot to look up. <laughs> I know. But I was just feeling, um, was it, um, so it started um, as one feather and then it becomes like wings, you know, and then the whole sky becomes like um, full of feathers, mm -hmm. you know, thin lines. Mm -hmm. No, it's good, like, okay, so <laughs> Angel, what is it that you want to show me? Is that a message for me? Angels you know? all around you. Oh. There are angels all around you. Mm. They show you in a form that you can understand. Because if I say angel, everyone will go halo, wing, man, robe, something of that sort. Shiny. And it's always associated with, if it doesn't fly and it's not a bird, then it has to be an angel. <laughs> that is the mindset on the planet. Mm -hmm. so they show you feathers. Do you know the symbolism of feathers? Anyone? Mm -hmm. No. Symbolism. Angels. Huh? Angels. Angels. Absolutely. Oh, those the, the wings. The wings. Yeah, the wings. Uh huh. Oh. Also, think about it. What is the most common phrase on the planet? Light as a what? Feather. Light as a feather. So yeah. if you're light as a feather, there there is no weight on you. You're free as the wind. You're free to be who you are and express yourself. A bird is free to go wherever he wants to go. But it's showing you the angelic side of it. But it's also showing you creation. That is the most important, it's showing you creation. Creation is always evolving and, and always changing. Mm. Okay. I, I always know that um, we can do funny things, you know? <laughs> funny things. <laughs> uh, like sometimes, uh, I, I think I, I learned it somewhere. Uh, I forgot. Maybe I read it somewhere. It's that like if you look at a cloud, mm -hmm. okay, and if it's a, a, a shape, a certain form, and then you can point your finger and you say split. Mm -hmm. After some time, you will split into two. You okay. guys can try if you want. Well, so I, I will always have fun. I mean, he'll be driving, right? So I'll be looking out the, win out the window and I'll go like, split. And then gradually I see them split into two pieces. Yep. Let them have dominion over how much of the earth? All of it. All of the earth. The master showed you how to calm the winds and the sea when there was a rough storm. And he said, peace, be still. Mm. You said, split. And it had to split. And it doesn't take long for it to split. Mm -hmm. You get to see the result and then go through the experience of, wow, that really worked. Mm -hmm. And it's to teach you, wow, if I can get a cloud, what else can I do? <laughs> right? Okay. Most people will go, oh, you just imagine it, uh, another win, and they'll try to give you some geographical weather report mm -hmm. answer other than, wow, great. Let me go try it. Yeah. Nobody wants to go to the extreme and learn the supernatural because it would either go against their belief, their religion, or against their friends. I don't want my friends to perceive me this way. I don't want to think that I'm the weird or crazy. Kind of like if you see a person talking to themselves and then they go, well, at least he doesn't answer back. So he ain't really crazy because I talk to myself type thing. And I go, so if he does answer himself, does it really make himself crazy? No. No. Because if everyone talks to themselves, which they literally do, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm just more verbal and audible than others. Mm -hmm. But everybody will always think it in their head. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All yes. Right. And uh, after yesterday when we had so much fun, um, well, you know, we haven't gone out for a long, long time, like what, mm -hmm. two months? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no. we went for a, a drive and then we came back. And this morning he said we received the 
the government funding for our company. All right. Congratulations. Hmm. That is a blessing. Yeah. Great blessing. And it's only going to get more and more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I'm going Good. to write that one check. <laughs> 11.5 million. Too easy. Yes. <laughs> Way too easy. So now you can call money come. Yeah, it has been. Well, know. think about this thought. If you can tell the, the cloud in your mind, or even if you said it out loud, but even if you said it in your mind, split, and you see the split, think about money come. I am abundant. I am wealthy. I am rich. I know. I, I wanted to tell my bank, right? More longer numbers, you know, more digits. So what makes the cloud different than the bank account? It's the same. Uh -huh. I just have to decree it, right? Order it. Same, same. It's the same energy. What stops people is the number. Correct. The number is even too big for them because they've never had <coughs> money or don't know how to manage that much money or whatever. Scared of that much money? Who knows? Mm -hmm. But they never act on it. You're courageous enough to act on the thought. Hey, I want to split the cloud. And that's what makes us very peculiar, which is a great thing, because we want to be peculiar in this way because this is how we teach the people. Especially when those that are in re really in religion, this is how you teach them to come out of religion and become more spiritual. Yeah. Religion always confines, religion keeps you in prohibition. Religion always says, mine is better than yours. Religion keeps you in judgment. Religion keeps you in separation. And I'm not saying everything is bad about religion. I'm not saying that, but for the whole concept of religion, it is so divided that if you were to use it for what it's for, it is to unite. But there's no unification in the religion. Does that make sense? Yes. So now everybody's off doing their own thing, and now there's wars behind the religion. There's war behind the, the money. There's wars behind the land and all these things. And it's all the perception of, let's all have this one thought. So now mm -hmm. once we have this one thought, now it's energy and motion. And now here comes the result or the experience. Mm -hmm. So now you have a World War One, a World War Two. Now you have these civil wars and things like that. Because of how people are thinking. That's why we always try to encourage, take no thought. In other words, when we say take no thought, don't take the negative thoughts or don't take the thoughts of fear. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to add is that uh, what we have studied is that uh, religion is actually man-made. Mm, absolutely. Yep. Spirituality is God. God-made. Yep. And because we're all spiritual beings, it resonates in your spirit when you're open-minded and you're aware and you're seeking first the kingdom of God. When you're seeking to be better and better, then you have no choice but to see the path of God, which is the path of love, compassion, forgiveness, and these things. So now you begin to train the thought. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. All right. So this will be an easy lesson, and so we already know the thoughts. <laughs> so on page 436, as we get started, unloving thoughts alter the chemical balance for the body or of your body. Anybody understand what that means? Yeah. Loving thoughts alter the chemical balance of your body. Mm -hmm. So when you see sickness appear, these are the thoughts that cause sickness. We can mm -hmm. probably say amen and end the whole lesson right there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yes. But that is the, that is the whole thought. So as we talked about yesterday, the two main thoughts, which is part of the question, which you already know the answer to, what are the two main thoughts? Love or fear, satisfying or unsatisfying. Too easy. 
So as we begin to teach the people that, that we come encountered with, when we, when we see with the natural eyes sickness, now we understand that this person has took the other thought. They have talked, they've taken the thought of fear and they have labeled it in whatever category to justify the sickness. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is a sponsoring thought? What is a sponsoring thought? No idea. No idea. Yes, you do. I just haven't used it in these exact words. Remember I said, if you have a thought, you will get a similar thought and then a conjoining thought mm -hmm. and that thought. Well, in reality, those are your sponsoring thought. So if you were to go sponsor Anson, you would be what? You would be his what? Guardian. His guardian or his sponsor, his representative. Mm -hmm. So now that will be the prime thought, the mm -hmm. first thought mm -hmm. that would come through. So that would be the first thought of either love or fear. Now, what do I choose in this direction under these two umbrellas? Do I call it depression? Do I call it joy? Which one do I choose? So now that's the sponsoring thought. Okay. So, how can unloving thoughts make the body sick? Because you're out of balance. You're out of balance. But how does it physically make you sick? So we're going to get deep into it. Mm. Well, it makes you feel unhappy, unloved. So, all this and then it causes the body to react to those frequency, and then it will bring up symptoms, right? Yep, absolutely. And it all came from the sponsoring thought. So now you always hear me say, change the thought, and we always go, oh, satisfying, not satisfying. But if you, if it's for us, because we are training our minds to understand satisfying thought, not satisfying thought, when you're teaching other people who don't understand that mentality, you know how hard it is for them to change that thought because mm -hmm. that thought has become the sponsoring thought and the habitual thought. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's quote unquote easier said than done mm -hmm. to yes. change the thought. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're seeing the physical manifestation of it. So in other words, if you were to go into a poor stricken neighborhood it would be very difficult to change the poor mentality yeah. because they're surrounded with the natural visual thought of I'm poor. Everything I see is poor. Everything I see is lack. Everything I see is quote unquote unloved. It's not good on the eyes. It's an eyesore type thing. Okay. I didn't give you an affirmation because actually I forgot. <laughs> you want to give us one? Sure, we can give you an affirmation. Every thought is a desirable thought. Every thought is a desirable thought. Every thought is a loving thought. Here's the key. I am in control of my thought. Pretty easy. Can we work with that affirmation? Is that a good one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Can someone start us off? This is kind of long, so I'll, I'll pick up in the, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Every human thought, every human action is based in either love or fear. There's no other human motivation. All other ideas are but derivatives of these two. They are simply different versions 
different twists on the same thing. Think on this deeply and you will see that it is true. This is what I call the sponsoring thought. It is either a thought of love or fear. This is the thought behind the thoughts. It is the first thought. It is prime force. It is the raw energy that drives the engine human experience and behavior. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. I, I like to I like to tell people that when you when you start um, thinking right about something and mm -hmm. you will continuously build up more thoughts on it right absolutely so it can it it becomes a cycle a cycle of thoughts and then mm -hmm. most of the time because of the human mind right it will create it will lead you to more and more negative thoughts. Correct. By nature, we are definitely going to negative. Yep. Because so we have to redirect ourselves and uh, be aware. And then we start from a neutral ground and then we build up to the positive. So that's what I always tell people what is a vicious cycle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, but the problem is because whenever we start to think of something, we always have what if it doesn't come out that way? You know, what if it, it, it goes the, the, the other way? And then after that, instead of keeping to our initial thought, we start to uh, go more towards the what if things. And, mm -hmm. and, and then we drift so far away. Absolutely. And those become the sponsoring thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So now that, that thought became the sponsoring thought and now off they go with, what if it doesn't work? What if yeah. it doesn't happen? What if they tell me no? What if I get rejected? All these what ifs. And yeah. then guess what? The what ifs is under the umbrella of fear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because now what ifs never get done. <laughs> yeah. Never get done. And that's not for everything, but that's majority of the time it never gets done. Mm -hmm. The usual method of creation for the most for most human for most human beings is a three-step process involving thought, word, and deed, or action. You've already heard me talk about that. These are really the primary ones, but I taught the five steps to give you more in-depth comprehension of how it works, because you as God, when you do the word, thought, and deed, you actually go into, and I'm kind of jumping way ahead of the lesson, you actually go into, um, Create, oh, I lost my train of thought. I'll get to it in a minute. Anyway, when you do the word, thought, and action, or word, thought, and deed, you begin to go through that process. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When we go, what do you want and why do you want it? That actually comes from the thought, then the word, and then it's the action. I just showed you, okay, what does step one do? What does step two do? Yeah. What does step three do? So now we can minimize it and go, okay, well, we know how the steps work. So now word, thought, deed. Remember I did the lesson on be, do, have? Mm -hmm. This is the same thing as be, do, have. So when you do the be, do, have, you're actually going through the creative motion of what you want the result or the experience to be from that thought. Does that make sense? So it works like this. First comes thought, the formative idea, the initial concept. Then comes the word. Most thoughts ultimately form themselves into words, which are often then written or spoken. That's why when Anson wrote it out yesterday, it was step by step by step by step. So how many ever steps he chose is what he got, but it came from the initial thought. And then it was the word or the, or the written spoken word. Okay. So what this does, it, remember I said it gives it added energy because you were taught to believe what you speak mm -hmm. from a child all the way up into your adult life. And even now you're still taught to believe what you speak. So when he did that, he gave it added or more energy onto that thought 
and then he pushed it into the world that you would call manifestation. But in actuality, it was an experience. It was a process. Okay. So then it was noticed by others because he shared it with us all. And then here's how it was noticed elsewhere. His supervisor assumed it was going to take him till 7 p.m. or later in the evening. And it took him way less time where she cut him loose. Mm -hmm. So she saw that part of the manifestation as well. Not in terms of what he wrote down, but wow, you got this accomplished very fast in terms of helping the company out to achieve a goal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thoughts are very subtle, yet extremely powerful forms of energy. That's why I'm always emphasizing, watch your thought, take no thought, be careful what you think. Because as soon as you think it, it's speed of thought, it's in the universe instantly. And you cannot take it back. No do-overs when it comes to that. That's mm -hmm. why we always say, try to be deliberate creators. And what we try to say really is, be deliberate thinkers, okay? Words are less subtle, more dense. Why? Why are words more subtle, or words are less subtle, sorry, and more dense? In the English language, you can have one word that means how many different meanings? Yes. Now we have misunderstanding, mm. miscommunication. Mm. Now, we're not on the same page vibrating to get the achieved goal. Mm -hmm. So now there's the denseness of it. Mm. Because a lot of people don't believe the words that they speak are going to manifest. Mm -hmm. And if you have a negative word, it carries density. Vice, if you say a loving word, it's it's lighter. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, actions are the most dense of all. So when you go word, thought, or deed, now the action is when Anson pushed the thought into reality, into an actual experience that he can play out, if you will. Mm -hmm. I want good parking. Front row parking. I want the best chef in the best restaurant, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And it, you'll see it manifest, right? Mm -hmm. So though the action, and the reason why the action is most dense of all is because people don't know how to focus the action. Action is step two. Mm -hmm. God does the work. Does that make sense? Yes. So people try to get, people try to go act it out and get no results or get the same results and go it didn't work and then they never try something different. Okay. Action is energy in a in heavy physical form in heavy motion. When you think, say, and act out a negative concept such as "I am sick," you place tremendous creative energy in motion. Just on I'm sick alone, the thought, every cell molecule in your body begins to respond to I am sick. Then all of a sudden, you get a sniffle. And then you get a sore throat. Then you get earache or stuffy nose or full on flu or now you get something cancer or whatever, okay? So it's a small wonder that you come down with a cold, that would be the least of it. Does that make sense? So finally, in some cases, words are put into action and you have to, you have what you call a result. You have a result of that word. I love you. Now, what is the action of I love you? Okay. Uh, a physical world manifestation of, of what all started with a thought. Everything around you in your man-made world came into being this way of some sort of variation of it. All three creation centers were used. 
word, thought, action, or deed. Mm -hmm. Nothing occurs in your life, nothing which is not first a thought. Thoughts are like magnets drawing effects to you. So yesterday we talked about reaping and sowing or the law of attraction. So people always say, well, pastor, I didn't want that to come to me. I would never, I would never want that upon myself. And we go, well, actuality you did because thoughts are like magnets. So you drew this experience onto yourself. So here's why we always emphasize, take ownership of it and rejoice in trouble. It helps lighten up the energy of the density of that action. It makes it a little bit easier per se. Uh, the thought may not always be obvious and thus clearly causative as in, I'm going to contract a terrible disease. Some people might say, here's how subtle it might be. They'll have a conversation with their friends or someone and they'll say, man, I hope I don't get sick. Does that sound harmless? Yeah. Sounds very harmless, but that very thought and that very word begins to put energy, extremely amount of energy in motion just on, I hope I don't. Even though you hear the word, I don't, it's the indication that I'm going to get it uh -huh. because there's fear behind, I hope I don't. I'm a, I am afraid of getting this is really the real statement of what's being said. Yeah. You see how subtle that word is? <clears throat> Hope I don't lose my job. Hope the company doesn't shut down. Something like that is just subtle. And if enough people say that, what do you think is going to happen? So You're going to yeah. start seeing things shut down. Simple as cloud split. And then the cloud splits. Slowly it splits, but it does split. Um, the thought may be, and usually is, far more subtle than that. From the time they wake up is when the sponsoring thought starts. Oh my God, I hope this doesn't be a bad day. <laughs> How many people have heard, or even yourself, woke up and said that? Yeah. Even more, le it's even less subtle than that. Make sense? Hmm. Uh, where am I at? I'm not worthy to leave. Okay. My life is always a mess. Hmm. I'm sick and tired of my life. I'm alone and I will never find my one true love. I don't have enough money. Blah, 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 blah. All these things people say in their mind. Hmm. And all of a sudden, they go through experience of it. Remember I said I went to overseas and the woman who'd been praying for 10 years and I said, good Lord, what have you been praying? And we wrote down her husband and we built her husband and he came within that year and they're still married to this very day. But it was one of those things where she was, oh, I hope I'm gonna get a man. But then in the back of her mind, I'm not pretty enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not sexy enough. Maybe he will like this or he might not like that. So every year for 10 years, she was praying that prayer, but it was defeating the prayer of because of the thought. Mm -hmm. So now the thought word indeed was, I can't be in a relationship because I am fearful of being alone. Mm -hmm. So now depression comes and so forth and so on. If you think thoughts of illness or dis-ease or continue, continuing anger, hatred, or, and negativity, your body will translate these thoughts into physical form. Cloud split. Watch this. As simple as when Anson was on the plane, and I know we're going way back because I love that story with the gentleman, but as simple as I don't want this person to be angry or I don't want this person to have a bad or whatever the thought was, was dominating the whole plane. Hanson changed that thought into a physical form. By the time the plane landed, the man's mind was conformed into, I'm happy now. So now he won't go home and beat the wife and kick the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying that he would do that. We're, we're, I'm only joking. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So 
it was that form of thought of one, I want betterment for someone else. Forgiving of himself. People will see this negative sick form and they will say, what's the matter? Can you see sickness? Yeah. Absolutely. Someone gets sick, their countenance change, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Their behavior change, their energy. You walk into their energy, automatically you go, ooh, what's wrong with you? Yeah. What's the matter? Literally, you don't know how accurate your question is because they have taken on fear and that physical form has turned into what they call a sickness or illness or a disease. Okay. So in the first, that which is immediate, the very moment you think an un unloving thought as a physical embodiment, embodied being, you immediately alter the electrical flow of energy throughout the physical system. This is why when you get afraid, you feel the pounding and you feel the energy, the electrical energy of your body tense up within the body. Same thing as you get anger, tenses up. Fear always takes you into a tense place, always, okay? Uh, you immediately alter the chemical balance of the body and hereby experience tightness in the body, sadness perhaps, depression, an overall ill at ease feeling. For every negative thought, not just big ones that really get your attention wrapped around, but even the small ones, this is still true. Depression can only occur in a mind that has been denying its pathway to joy. Can someone take that next part? Page 438. Depression then is the result of a resistance to the true flow of life throughout the body mind. This resistance occurs in many ways. It can be the result of not feeling a feeling to its completion, withholding mm -hmm. a simple truth, and more often than not, from denying the impulse of the heart. Mm -hmm. okay. It is extremely, is exceedingly difficult to reverse the effects of ne negative thinking once they have taken physical form. Not impossible, but exceedingly difficult. Mm -hmm. It takes an act of extreme faith. It requires an extraordinary belief in the positive force of the universe, whether you call that God, Goddess, the unmoved mover, prime force, force creator, a source creator, first cause, or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Healers have just such faith, which are all of you. Mm -hmm. Technically, everyone is a healer. <clears throat> Everyone is a healer. People don't accept that they are healers. No, after I'm not a healer. That's not my gift. Well, because you choose not to use that gift. Uh -huh. It's just a choice. That's all. Uh, it is a fate that crosses over into absolute knowing. When we perform healing, we know instantaneously that it's done. When we heal, we never see the sickness, we only see the wholeness. It's the people's faith that stops them from being healed because they don't believe they can be made healed or whole. Mm -hmm. So it's their believing. They, they know that you are meant to be whole, complete, and perfect in this moment now. Remember that as a healer, you know them to be whole, complete, and perfect in that moment right now. So when y'all went overseas and you were y'all were going through your journey of, of praying for the sick people, this is what you actually experienced where you saw only the whole, complete, and perfect of those people in the now. Even though you didn't see the rapid part of them physically being healed, it will still put in motion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This knowing, this knowingness is also a thought and an exceeding powerful one. It has the power to move mountains to say nothing of molecules in your body. The healer can heal often, even at a distance. Thoughts 
knows no distance. Mm -hmm. So when people call me and they might be in Texas or Colorado or Florida or even Africa or wherever, it's just a word. It's a thought. I don't have to physically be there to lay hands. You remember in the Bible, Jesus was on his way to heal a little girl who was dying. Mm -hmm. By the way, she died, according to the book. But the centurion came, and here's what's interesting about that story. Jesus is on his way to heal this little girl, and a centurion soldier comes and says, basically, can you heal my servant? Ask for basically healing. Jesus was going to divert his journey to go to the centurion's house. I'm convinced that he knew he wasn't going to go because he was a master. He knew the centurion's level of faith. The centurion's words was, basically, no, don't come to the house. Just say a word and my servant will be made whole. Mm -hmm. It never says what he said. Well, it says he said a word, and within the same self hour, the servant became whole. He goes on to complete the journey, and the little girl dies. So when he gets there, they go, oh, if you would have got her earlier, she wouldn't have died. He says, she's not dead. She's asleep. They begin to laugh at him and, and scorn him. Because of their unbelief, he put them all out. And then he spoke a word and the sleep girl came back to life and they came down and the parents and everybody began to rejoice. So he showed them the process of the word thought deed. He showed them how you could physically heal that body by the thought and by the energy that goes through. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, jump down to uh, say by the word, but we're going to the third sentence. You all have many lepers. Your mind is eaten away with negative thoughts. Not you all. Some of these are, are thrust upon you. Many of these you actually make up, conjure up yourselves, mm -hmm. and then harbor them and entertain for hours, days, weeks, months, mm -hmm. even years, and why you are sick. This is why people say over and over and over and over, oh, I'm sick or I'm, or here's a common one that's so subtle that you all hear. If it starts getting cold, people say, oh, this is the, what season? The flu season. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it's so, it's so subtle. Mm -hmm. and it sounds so harmless. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a good warning. But mm -hmm. look what it does. Mm -hmm. Then everybody got caught the uh, flu. Yeah. And some, some, like some of the students will say, oh, I think I caught the chill. I said, caught something more fun, please. Right. Chill is no fun. Right, exactly. And they'll go like, what? But they don't understand your thought or how you think because you only see the wholeness. You only see the love. They're only seeing the result of it because of what they have experienced, right? You can solve some of the health problems, as you put it, by solving the problems you're thinking. Yes, you can heal some of the conditions you've already acquired, given yourself, as well as prevent major new problems from developing. Even the frequencies, remember I sent you the chakra frequencies? Those frequencies also can be used to heal the body. You put on a 532 or 432, 528 hertz, 960 hertz, things like that, heals the body. Put on God frequency, heals the body. Yeah. Put these frequencies on, they heal the body. Mm -hmm. That's why when you put it, if you play the chakra music at night when you go to sleep, you'll sleep so much better. Mm -hmm. some, not everyone, because some people don't like some of the tones, but if you find a tone that you're comfortable with, and you listen to it as you fall asleep, when you get into the theta, you begin to heal the body. Watch this. Has everyone has been injured before, yes? Yes. 
for more than 24 hours. So maybe you you slammed the, slammed your finger in the door or stubbed your toe or whatever, right? You know the physical pain is there because of the body. That's the indicators of, of nerves. But think about this. Are you hurting when you go to sleep? No. The wow. problem is kind of difficult to get to sleep because of the pain. <laughs> but you eventually, you, but eventually, you do what? You fall asleep, yeah. You fall asleep. Even if people go, oh, the pain is too bearable, I can't go to sleep. I guarantee you that body will find a way to shut down to go to sleep. Yes. You might not sleep long, but you're going to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. but during that time that you are sleeping, do you feel that pain? No. Mm -hmm. So what no. blocks that pain? You're Your in a body shut down. Your body shut down. Yeah. So if you can train the mind to do the exact same thing in the theta state, pain goes away. Oh. Okay. This is where meditation comes into place where now you're breathing and you're relaxing the body where once you're focused on so much on your breathing and meditating, you cannot think of the pain. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. or not at all if you're really doing it properly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, where am I? At? But now comes. Okay. But now uh -huh. comes the question: How to change a sponsoring thought? We always talk about that. Satisfying, not satisfying. But now we go a little bit deeper. For all humans, do not change their sponsoring thought. Humankind could doom itself to extinction. The most rapid way to change a root thought or a sponsoring idea is to reverse the thought word deed process. We gave it to you in the most simplest way of satisfying and not satisfying, but in order to do that, you have to actually reverse word thought deed. How do you do that? How do you do the deed you want to have the new thought about? <laughs> yeah. Do something opposite of what you're thinking. Yep. Satisfying that satisfying. But if you have to learn to do the deed, word thought deed. Deed is the action. So what do I, what action must I take first to change the thought? Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so we teach people satisfying, not satisfying. They're going to say, I don't know how to do that. Because it's hard for them to go find a satisfying thought mm -hmm. because they've had these sponsoring thoughts that they've been carrying for months, days, weeks, years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, I, I have a condition whereby my spine is uh, S. S scoliosis. Right, and from a very young age, uh, the physicians, the doctors, or whoever, they're always telling me that you're gonna have a lot of pain and aches and you know blah 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 and all kinds of um, uh, weaknesses that will come with it, right? Mm -hmm. And I have never accepted that. So what I do is that I I always think of myself as perfect, straight, mm -hmm. even though. When I look at the mirror, it's not straight, but it's okay. It's and straight. so I will not say the words that this is painful or what. I, I don't talk about that. I always tell myself I'm healthy. Uh, my back is fine, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, a few years back, a Chinese uh, physician actually checked my spine and then she go like, oh, poor thing. <laughs> so I look at her, I said, no, don't do that. I'm not suffering, please. <laughs> and she was going like, you're kind of weird. You should be having a lot of pains, a lot of problems coming from that. And so she, she would do the acupuncture thing, right? And then later on, halfway through, she told me, you must be somebody, you must be somebody very important. Mm -hmm. You are doing a very important mission. That's why your physical body does not suffer. That's right. Then I look at her. Thank you. Because <laughs> I didn't know what I was <laughs> Well, she was merely telling you in her own way, you are God. You have, this, you have this physical condition that you have no physical pain from or result from. So in other words, 
we have labeled you this, but you have no, you have no symptoms of it. Yes. We see the curve, but you don't have the symptoms of that curve. Mm. Uh -huh. And it baffled the mind. And it's because you tell yourself it's straight. In other words, not in terms of I want a straight back, but in terms of I'm not going to be in pain. So now straight turns into I don't want pain. Man. I don't use the word pain. Well, the doctors use pain, but I want straight. Yeah. Because the doctor said because it's curved, there's going to be pain. Mm -hmm. So you don't say the word pain, you know, because of the curve, they said pain. My mind says straight, no pain. Mm -hmm. Subtle yes. thought. Mm -hmm. Without saying the thought. So you do the deed that you want to have the new thought about. Mm -hmm. So Pastor, I don't know how to change my thought. Is that a satisfying thought when you say that thought? No, we'll change the thought. I don't know how. Okay, well, tell me a better, tell me a better story out of what you just told me. How can you turn that story into a better story? In other words, they're going to turn my lights off and I don't have enough money, which is some people's reality. How can I tell a better story about my situation? So you have to think about that you actually, well, you may not have, you know, that much, but you have some. Mm -hmm. And um, like, um, you know, I used to tell Melissa, at least we are not sleeping on the streets. Right. 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 And look at the cars we're driving. We're not poor. Right. We're just not that rich, but we're not poor. Right. And she'll go like, what are you <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's it's the but even those subtle thoughts is we're not rich but we're not poor. So now what are you? We uh well we we rich. have enough more than enough most of the time. So. Rich. rich is by whose definition? Yeah, the numbers. My number. Mm -hmm. My number makes me rich. Not yeah. somebody else's statistical number. Because we all spend our money differently. We all spend our time differently. We all enjoy what we want to do differently. Mm -hmm. do. Some some millionaires like to go fly to the canyons for breakfast because they can. Mm -hmm. I can go in my kitchen to get the same breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I like to buy breakfast for my friends. <laughs> right. It's just... Your, your whose definition of rich, whose definition of poor? It's a it's a mindset, and once we get if you get out of the mindset, now everything changes, because now you don't see a rich or a poor. Now you go, what can I do to create in this moment right now? So much. <laughs> yeah, because now freedom, because now that becomes a sponsoring thought. Mm -hmm. What do I want and why do I want it? Now I'm a deliberate creator. I have more than enough. Universe says, okay, now be specific on more than enough because we can keep giving you more than enough mm -hmm. and you'll get more than enough, more than enough till you have so much that you'll have more than enough. So now, quote unquote, your cup runneth over with more than enough. Now you can give unto others without it being a hindrance unto yourself or you giving grudgingly. Because now you don't think that thought. That makes sense? Yes. So as you do the reverse process, they say the words that you want to have your new thought about. Say the words you want to have the new thought about. Pastor, I can't pay my bill. Say the word you want your new thought to be about. You see? This is how you do the, the reverse of the thought, word, deed, reverse action. Does that make sense? So now you've done the deed, the action of it. So now here comes the word part of it. Now, how can you make this a satisfying thought? Tell a better satisfying story. Yeah. And once they begin to tell a better feeling story, notice I added the word feeling 
better feeling story, now they begin to tell a better feeling story. Now, this doesn't look so bad. We're not saying it, it goes away, but it doesn't look so bad when you look at it. Because worrying about it doesn't change it. Nope. Yeah. Worrying does in, nothing more but giving it more power and more energy of I can't pay that bill or I can't do this or I can't be that or I will never get healed or whatever the case might be. Um, do this often enough and you will train the mind to think a new way. This is why when you wake up in the morning, you decree, I come into this day in God, with God, for God, and by God, or I come into this day in love, with love. When you come, when you do this often enough, then that becomes the sponsoring thought. Mm -hmm. Now you can change those root thoughts into the sponsoring thoughts because now you're training the mind to change the new thoughts. That makes sense? Yes. As you begin to walk the spiritual path, you realize you need to be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and that, in fact, you cannot awaken yourself because if you could, you would have done so already. This is why people haven't woke up, and this is why people are saying, oh, well, it's flu season. Mm -hmm. And all the they might not get the flu, but then some people around them will get the flu or whatever. Uh, then the opportunities are presented that contain within them all that you need to awaken from your illusion, but you resist it because it does not conform to your image of yourself. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's how most, well, I don't want to say all, but majority of people think like that, especially the ones we encounter that we are healing. Do you realize when you smile, you heal? Person has a bad day, you smile and they smile back. They're not in that moment sad in that moment because they're smiling back. They might <laughs> one out. <laughs> But at least it's up and not down. Uh, yeah. At least you move the energy in a positive direction from where they were. That's why we say you're all healers in your own way. You can come in and say a word and change the energy of a conversation that might be heavy or dense or fear-based. Make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, all negative. Where am I? Oh. There are many ways in which you can resist and create a blockage in, in the flow of energy through, through the system. It is all around some form of a negative thought. All negativity is an, an expression of fear. All attempts to control another are really fear. Anger is merely a form of fear. So the very moment in which the mind is used to think a negative thought, there is an immediate karmic effect. Given that effect over a period of time, an illness is created in the body. Depression is created in the emotional field. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that you deal with are going to be depressed. In other words, they're, they're done. They're, they're, they don't, they, they're so far down, it's hard for them to go up. So, that, so they're depressed. Everything sucked out of them. So the highlight of that is because of your spirit, your spirit basically never forgets who you really are. Your spirit is always reminding you, you are the holy child of God. You are whole. You are perfect. You are powerful. You are loved. You're these, the joy. You're these things. So the soul watches the whole drama play out year after year, month after month, day after day, moment after moment, and always holds the truth about you. It never get, forgets about the blueprint, the original plan, the first idea, the creative thought. Its job is to remind you, that is, to literally remind you so that you may remember once again who you are and then choose who you now wish to be. This is what we're basically trying to do is get people to remember who they are as God. When you tell them that, oh boy, that's blasphemy. You're going to get pushback. You're going to get resistance until you start explaining to him, greater is he who is in me than he who's in the world. So now greater is he who God is in me now I become God because now I become that vessel for God. So I become the image and the likeness of my creator with all power. Does that make sense? So now let there be, I can be, let there be. 
and it will be. Clout split, it will split. I want new car, new car come. I can't stand that man, man gets worse. <laughs> Pastor, you said you can't change people, you can't change the world, but you can influence, words change people. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, you can. oh, in this way, the cycle of creation and experience, imaging and fulfilling, knowing and growing into the unknown continues both now and forevermore. Hmm. Pretty much so. Things that we've already talked about, um, just a little bit more in depth, not too much more than you already know. Now you kind of understand the reverse process of how to change people's thoughts, how to change your own thoughts when those thoughts come. And you do it by different ways, different methods, but this is the primary focus of how to change your thoughts. So when we're getting people to think positive thoughts and not negative thoughts, trust me when I say this, and you've all experienced, you're going to get pushback mm -hmm. because they want to justify why they're in that position. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I'm lonely because I'm ugly. Pastor, I'm lonely because nobody loves me. Pastor, I'm lonely because of this. Or pastor, I don't have enough money because never accountability for self. Notice? Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns? I, I just remembered for the past few days, I have been listening to um, the frequency music. Mm -hmm. But it's, there's... Um, there's a series they call Angelic Message. Mm -hmm. So is that why I said, yeah, I saw the feathers yeah. and the angel thing. They're talking to you. Our job is to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Signs, wonders, and miracles. They're all around us. The whispers, the thoughts, the... Think about this. Here, here's, a, here's a real interesting question for you. Who told you to look up and notice the cloud? Who told you to look up? And notice the cloud. Nothing else to see. <laughs> what thought? Yeah, I know you might be bored in your mind, but what thought said, look at that cloud? Look up and take, wow, before there's so much other stuff to see. Hmm. But what made me look up and then stay there in that moment? And then see the creativity moment by moment. And it all started with cloud split. And now all of a sudden we got feathers. <laughs> now we got angels. <laughs> now, now, the, now the trip is not boring. <laughs> or I the know. boat is not boring now. Mm -hmm. So now you're self entertained by the universe. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yes. Very so, that's why we always emphasize we are one because you were one with that cloud. The cloud was one with you. You can't have dominion over something if you don't understand it. Mm. <laughs> You'll get it later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. Questions, comments, concerns? No. Good. All, All, right. Good. All good. All right. Let's pray us out. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for this day, this opportunity that you bless us in. We thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gift and our talents. We thank you for letting us bless others as you blessed us. We thank you for blessing over those who wanted to be here, who couldn't be here, that they'll be here at the next point of time. Continue to be with them, heal their bodies, bless over their finances, bless over their relationship, continue to give them traveling grace, bless over our neighbors, our neighborhood, those less fortunate than self, the homeless, the sick and shut in, that you heal their bodies, bless over those who have lost loved ones, that you comfort their hearts, and we thank you that when we come together in the next point in time, that we see more of you. We thank you for these things. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Have a blessed week, blessed week, blessed week. And we will talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.